Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is David. This is Nathan. This is Cameron. And welcome to another installment of The Commentators. This week, we're taking a look at Pier Paolo Pasolini's controversial masterpiece, Salo, or the 120 Days of Saddam. Well, which is it, David? Make up your mind. It's is one it Salo, or is it the 120 Days of Well, it's glad, um. you, glad you pointed it out, because it is adapted <laughs> from a Marquis de Sade book. Of Saddam. Oh, that is, Saddam. See, that is great. I'm glad we're watching this instead of the 121 Days of Saddam, because that one's just fucked. Yep. And of course, this is an, an Italian film, and it's one of the most controversial films ever made. It's been banned all over the place, in particular, when it was uh, supposed to come out in the UK in January of 1976 by the, the BB, uh, I think it was what, the British Board yeah, of Film uh, Censors. Didn't allow it. Like, that's it. Nope, we ain't going to show it. But what ended up happening was it finally got shown in its uncut form in 2000. <coughs> so, so the, okay, so was this considered a video nasty? Uh, actually, I don't even know if it got to the point to it, but that's a very good point. The people who don't know who the video nasties are, they're films such as The Evil Dead that the British censors didn't put forward. They're like, okay, these are gross, disgusting, we can't show it to the public. Making them more appealing. Yep. This is also the first uh, Criterion Collection movie that we're watching. Mm-hmm. Yep. Is that why the Criterion picked it? Because it was banned and it was controversial. Is that, yep. is that the it, only thing they cared yeah, about? Oh, is that It was banned and controversial. Put oh, it in the Criterion oh, collection. Yeah, Although last, all the last week with Halloween 3, we did watch the Criterion of Cult, the Scream Factory edition. That's true. That is true. And the interesting thing about this is that this is a re-release. What we're watching is the re-release Criterion <laughs> Collection DVD because the original one that came out like back in 97 or 98 is one of the is probably the most expensive DVD on the market. Some have sold close to $1,000. Wait, wait, rare? hold on. This is a DVD, not Blu-ray? Bye. Aww. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just bought it before Blu-ray became a big thing no. in my family. Is that why it looks so grainy? It's because it's DVD. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 kind of weird uh, how... I don't know if you're like this with everything, but for some things, I won't get it if, mm-hmm. it, if it's just on DVD. Especially when it comes to movies. If there's no, I mean, for something, there's no other choice. Because right now, uh, if you look online, like for something like Wild David Lynch's Wild at Heart, that's insane hmm. oh, to buy. This big name that passed by, Dante Ferretti, who has actually became an accomplished production designer who won three Oscars for Sweeney Todd, The Aviator, and Hugo. How long are these fucking credits? Good God. Yeah, it goes a while. It goes a while, yeah. But the music that you're also hearing is, oh, and this the cinematographer, Tonino oh, Delicoli, who worked, well, and, and Neil Morricone, because they're both worked with well, Sergio Leone. What does Technicolor mean in Italian? I don't know. Technicolor, really, no. Mamma mia, papa pia, baby's got the diarrhea. Okay. Her, 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 her. But, Racist. No, but it's interesting that those things popped up for cinematography and for music, that they both There's a bibliography with... section in these credits? <laughs> yeah, yeah, there is. <laughs> But <laughs> that should really be saved for the appendix of the movie. <laughs> her, her, her. Prodotto da Alberto Grimaldi. And if memory serves, Alberto Grimaldi actually helped co-produce Gangs of New York. And these are all names of pasta sauces yep. you can get in grocery stores. <laughs> Pier Paolo Pasolini. Yeah, that you can get at Whole yeah. Foods. But, <laughs> and for those who don't I'm know... I'm glad they translated the 1944 to 45. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I didn't really know what that meant. Yeah, you had to, yeah. Now, the thing is, uh, even though that the, the 120 Days of Saddam was a huge influence <laughs> on it, the film... Is it Saddam huh? or Sodom? Oh, Sodom. Sod- I, Sodom. I, I don't know. It's one, I, I keep thinking of Gorgeous George. Maybe is it oh, Sodom? Is it Sodom and Gomorrah yeah, no, which, or Sodom and Saddam Gomorrah. Hussein? Now, which, yeah, no, Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, which Gorgeous George? The wrestler or the or the guy with skunk hair? Skunk hair. Okay. <laughs> the guy who, who jizzed, in, cause someone jizzed in his hair. And the thing is, it's also based off of not only Marquis de Sade's book, but it's also based off of Dante's well, didn't he write that when uh, he was, uh, Comedy. Didn't he write that when he was incarcerated? That's a very good question. I, I do not know did. about that. Maybe he did. Because he did write a, a yep. ton when he was uh, behind bars. Yep. And the thing is, when it comes to Marquis de Sade, is that whoever don't know, he was a controversial French libertine who wrote these uh, very sexually explicit books in particular relating to torture, sex, all that, all that good stuff, a.k.a. Nathan's regular life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a normal Thursday for me. Yep. And of course, or they're you all, call them throb yep. days. And of course, they're all just giving <laughs> off their, their names here in this scene. And the thing is, um, what's different is in that Marquis de Sade, when he wrote the book, obviously it was set in France. In this case, if I recall correctly, it, the, what, what happened was in the production of making this film that Dave Pierre Paolo Pasolini, screenwriter, was getting bored with it. 
Because originally it was going to be a period piece, more of a period piece than this. But then they said, well, why don't we move it to, to Salo, which was a republic created during you know, fascist Italy, created by Benito Mussolini. And so basically what you're seeing here is the dying days of fascist Italy. And got the untouchables in Italy. Right? Yeah. They actually got like a Godfather <laughs> vibe, like, oh man, Sonny's fucking done. <laughs> and it's it's another thing about this film is that um, Let's go steal their bikes. <laughs> um, the director Piero Paolo Pasolini did not live to see the controversy that this film received. He actually he died. Let's see, he died November second, nineteen seventy five. He was murdered. The, the story the story goes was he was pick he was trying to pick up a young boy. That he, you know, have relations with, and the boy murdered, hit him with like a a, a, a blunt instrument, and mm. then he stole Pasolini's car and ran him over. <laughs> but That's then, great. but then, and actually, there's Pasolini's body right Aww. there. <laughs> it's actually it's interesting you point that out because Bernardo Bernardo Bertolucci, who did Last Tango in Paris before this film came out, he actually when he saw this film that he was reminded of his of his friend's death. Throughout the film, and it was a very hard film to watch. So, uh, an image like that—that's actually a good example. Yeah, it's of it. very hard to be reminded and, of a pedophile being murdered. That just yeah. breaks and my the, heart. And of course, you know, last angle of Pit in Paris, which you know, butter stocks rose through the roof. Yep, absolutely. Anal sex—it's humorous. Butter stotch. <laughs> butter stotch. Oh, boo. South Park. Anyone? Yeah. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Her, 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 her. Don't leave her. without your scarf. Oh. Can't leave without a scarf and jelly babies. Yeah. Oh, her, 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 her. Yep. It's the and, best swing ever. Yeah, and <laughs> it's, it's interesting that the director himself, uh, Pierre Paolo Pasolini, this was a guy who was simultaneously who was a he was a gay Catholic Marxist whose film The Gospel According to Saint Matthew, like I believe in 2013 or 2014, the Vatican declared it as being the best film concerning Jesus Christ. And it's, it's one of those films where you see it. Jesus Christ has got a big schnoz, his hair cut, he has a big unibrow. It looks mm. like, he really doesn't look like, you know, white Jesus, essentially. But it is a very good, it's a very well-told story course, about that. And then the Vatican gave that title to Jesus Christ, Vampire Hunter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what about Jesus Christ Superstar? What happened to that one? They didn't like well, it. Well, once, um, you know, Superstar with um, Molly Shannon came out, they decided any movie actually named Superstar will be thrown into fires. <laughs> Just jizzed in that lady's face. <laughs> we, we were ordered to spit in your face. Sorry. <laughs> into the hot Carl room. <laughs> Now, if you recognize that one of the actors, the one on the right with the beard, mm -hmm. was standing up, you would see him later on in Midnight Par sorry, Midnight Express, uh, Caligula. And have you ever seen the film called The American? By, the, you know, the George Clooney one? The George Clooney I film, yeah. That, he's in that film, too. Although I have seen Caligula, and I'm, I'm kind of ashamed to admit that I have. I see. Have we all seen Caligula? Yeah. yeah. There's nothing wrong with Caligula. It's awesome to watch. It's, oh, it's, it's boring as fuck. <laughs> Although you do get to see um uh what's her name? Helen, Helen um, Mirren? Helen Mirren. Oh man. You also, get to, you also get to see Alon you also get to see Alon Moore for heads. <laughs> oh yeah. That's... And what about that great device though that was cut off everybody's heads too? That that's what I was talking about. about. Oh, that one the, the oh, yeah, the, for head. That's such an elaborate contraption though, if you think about it. Bourgeoisie. <laughs> It's an inside I, joke. You had to be there, guys. I swear. I'm, sometimes when I see movies like this, are, that are, you know, they're so highly regarded. I'm always kind of surprised at how <clears throat> acting like what we just saw kind of gets to the crack. Because that's like the worst laughing I've ever seen. Is, is I mean, is it meant well, to be? Is it okay? Was that meant to be a take where it was supposed to be fake laughing? Well, the other thing is. Um, I think because everything's dubbed in this movie. First of all, yes, yes, that's true. Because one of the things that they would do in with Italian and they would do ADR for their films. In particular, Federico Fellini, what he would do is during the filmmaking, he would play music so that the actors would move in a certain way. And if you and if you watch it, that they do have this nice rhythm to their movements. That's what 
if and anything, they just keeps... dub over all their. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Even though it was still in Italian, they dub it over anyway. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And I might as well get this out of the way before the film uh, goes, because this film does feature many scenes of, of, of torture, pretty horrible things happen to these you know young boys and soon young girls. But the making of the film actually was a really fun experience, that all these you know kids getting together and just having fun, like, hey, let's go have fun. I never thought I'd see Jabba the Hutt in a fedora, but there it is right there. <laughs> The sexual tension, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm not joking. <laughs> and I hope everyone listening has their fudge brownies and lemonade ready. Oh, jeez, yeah. <laughs> I got something special planned, so... <laughs> oh, you guys are going to love that. It's going to take them a while. They got like six layers the, on them. That guy <laughs> looks like... I don't know, that guy kind of looked like... Remind me of Inspector Crusoe a little. <laughs> and it's one of those where I've always felt that when it came no, to... Well, pinch the, your nipples. Yeah. <laughs> And ladies and gentlemen, we've got ourselves penises. Yep. Both men sporting hooded monks. Yep. Come on, we want to see the mole come out. I've always felt that the film, when it came to the four um, main libertines, that those were very well cast in terms of how they they look. In particular, the one, the little short one with the red hair and the crossed eyes, that one in particular. For anyone listening, do you want to define what a libertine is? It's you. No, I mean, I'm I'm serious. For anyone who who doesn't know, right off the bat. Oh, fudge. (laughs) How How do I define libertine? I don't want to say necessarily, like, pervy, skeevy guy. It's a movie starring that. Johnny Depp. There you go. Oh, there you go. Watch yeah. that movie. There you go. <laughs> I was going to say to somebody of, of, a, of a certain higher class order who is known for doing very depraved things. So in other words, a, a good, maybe somewhat modern pop culture take would be Aleister Crowley. Yes, exactly. <clears throat> and I am aware I'm using somebody who died almost, maybe over a hundred years ago as a modern pop culture take. You might as well, of course. (laughs) See what I mean? Just like... (laughs) (laughs) Walter's a very common Italian name. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, because another one of the central themes of this film is just the idea of power. And is just that guy cross-eyed too? Yeah, that's what I was referring to. Like when it comes to just how well cast the guys are, in particular, he is just, in my opinion, very well cast because he looks incredibly creepy. And it might be one of those guys you know who you meet on the street. He turns out to be the nicest guy in the world, but he looks like a pervert. Yeah, Gerard Butler likes this. So, which one of these is the guy who tries to find the Ark? (laughs) Oh, those were Germans. What's the difference, really? Pizza. (laughs) Pizza. How well you use your red sauce, I suppose. (laughs) Man, Animal House 2 is really sad. (laughs) Oh, goodness. Okay, this is going to sound sarcastic, but it's mm-hmm. really not. Mm-hmm. Is that lady, um, like, uh, the ch- the uh, woman who played, like, the um, head henchwoman in one of the Bond movies? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I don't think it's her, no. But she looks like the chick from uh, from Russia with Love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 She also kind of reminds me of the one in, um, God, what is uh, Honor Majesty's Secret Service. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. I mean, it's also one of those where, to, to go back to, to, to Pasolini, I mean, this is a guy who did grow up during this whole, 
you know, horrible ordeal, like him and a bunch of other young Italian filmmakers, like, you know, Roberto <laughs> Rossellini and Bernardo Bertolucci, and they see what was going on. And so you do get, in my opinion, you do get this sense of many of the characters that you see were characters that were people that he, you know, grew up with, either like the young, you know, boys and girls, but some of the, like the really, you know, terrible jerks that they had to deal with in his life. So... It's one of those where when I talk about this film, I always say it's torture porn, but it's torture porn with a point. I just look at the guy with the cross and I'm just thinking Nathan, age 50. <laughs> but it's just also fascinating how she's doing, how she's essentially selling her like a piece of meat. Because that's just one of the things that Pasolini wanted to do. That he wanted to make this film about power and just how power can essentially take over, you know, when it comes to human bodies and such, of how it can corrupt people. In this case, how it can take those who don't have power and turn them into into meat, yeah. essentially. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't necessarily remember. None of these people are, are parents of these children. They just caught these kids. They're, yes, that is true. Some of them caught them, some of them... Man, yeah. Annie grew up angry. <laughs> looks like Rizzo from Greece. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you have a teen pregnancy. Rizzo. But I also just... I mean, another thing I want to... When I did mention the idea of... of of, of pornography, right? I mean, the difference between this and pornography, how sometimes with pornography, you know, you move in and actually get to see, you know, well, moved in now, but you get to see, you know, various, you know, nude bits and such. But this film, for the most part, is shot at a distance. Like, so that way you get this emotional detachment from it and it's like, it allows you just to think... Oh, well, like, there's okay, an emotional detachment in porn. Hmm. <laughs> Well, I guess well, but it's one of those where it's where you go really into it. It's like you're supposed to feel something erotic, as opposed to this film, when you see somebody well, who's naked, it feels. Side effect. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> Apparently, no fucked up teeth. They have really high standards. So the Brits are safe. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Well, of course, you do get this sense. It's like whenever they, you know, put someone... It's either way, these kids are dead. So I'm not even going to unwrap the present. <laughs> Yeah. This is pretty much the fun film of the century. And of course they, and of course <laughs> like, they, ah, suffering. Yes. Of, yeah, of course they stand up just like there are, you know, <laughs> other parts of them are standing at attention. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Do you see something? Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Well. Arcs in the second truck. <laughs> that would be interesting. So Indiana like... Jones and the 120 Days of Sodom. <laughs> he bursts that's in. A, that's a good title. <laughs> he bursts in. Da, 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 da. This is fucked up. <laughs> Run! And the thing is, what happens with the other kids in this film, it's... He's it's, the lucky one. He's the lucky one. He is. Of course, they weren't able to hit him until he got, like, 50 feet away. Well, they are stormtroopers. <laughs> <laughs> so they shouldn't be able to hit him then, either. <laughs> oh, here comes a joke. <laughs> and gotta love a good pun even though it went over the entire head of the American audiences <laughs> oh and I also forgot that this when it came to being banned it was also banned in places like Australia New Zealand 
all over the place. Oh, Riz. But as I was saying, when it came to when it, when, with Pasolini's death, I mean, going back to that, it was one of those deals where years later, the, 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 the boy who claimed that he murdered him recanted his story, said, no, what happened was this, this American mafia killed him. Sure, sure. So, they did. how was the kids? Well, so, why did the did they get explain why he came up with that explanation? The mafia told him to say it. Yeah, pretty much. It's the mafia's fault. And then, of course, led to speculation about well, what was the reason why under this idea? Why was the reason Pasolini went to go meet the mafia? And the, the the rumor was that there was footage lost from Salo, and that he went to go get it. Why the mafia had it? I have no idea. Hey, I'm a film. Italy, they're all in the mafia. I'm a film buff. <laughs> you know, you want this stuff back. Maybe I give it to you, break someone's leg, maybe. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a film director. <laughs> Looks like the break... really boring version of Sound of Music. <laughs> <laughs> the hills are alive with the sound of music. Nice. Oh goodness, this film. This so this is every speech every kid gets on their first day of school. Mm, pretty much. Yeah. So basically, the film has just been spoiled for us when it comes to these kids. It, 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 these dead. kids are dead. They're all dead, pretty much. They're all dead. Now the thing is, when it comes to this film, where you, <laughs> I love how they call the orgy room the so-called orgy room. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're just gonna tell stories in the orgy room. That's that's fine. Yeah, they do. It's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Yep. It's one of those where how this how it's structured. Like I said, it's very similar to how Dante Gary's The Defined Comedy was structured. In particular, <laughs> you know how they went into each circle of hell, and it's like, oh, here's another terrible story. Oh, here it's another terrible story. So it's basically like this. That's how it's structured. It's kind of like watching a Michael Bay movie. Like you, you think it gets so bad, but then there's just a whole another circle of awfulness that you, that you descend into. I think this is the first time this movie going. has been compared to anything by Michael Bay. <laughs> Except, obviously, The Rock. <laughs> okay, I could take one or the other, but both? <laughs> there have to be limits. Hmm? That's what we like to call foreshadowing, ladies and gentlemen. Ouch. Well, it looks like we're loss of a limb just because we want to get it on with one of the cute girls. Yeah, let's face it, we're both screwed just because we want to get our bones smooched. Yeah, does that include saying "Oh God" when you come? <laughs> yeah. But as I was getting to when it came to this this film, it's it's it gets to this idea of like how can you recommend something where you know they're done for? There's nothing that you can really say. there's nobody who's going to save them. They're screwed. And all these title cards sound like perfumes. <laughs> Circle of Obsessions. <laughs> By Britney Spears. <laughs> Ooh la la. Rorschach's dress. Mm-hmm. Where'd the camera go? <laughs> oh my god. It's film trickery. It's magic. What the... Oh, we're laughing because the dog saw something and he's trying to go get it. <laughs> oh, dogs are so stupid. <laughs> there's, there's, there's nothing uh, like juxtapositioning the death of a handful of teenagers with dogs doing cute stuff. <laughs> oh, you get away, you booby puppy. You know, just watch this. It's like with this is like one of Dante Freddy's first, you know, films that he did production design and. I mean, you guys can agree that the production design really is pretty damn good when it comes to this, just in terms of how it looks and such. And that it, it, it's, just, it's this weird combination of its, its elegance in terms of it is a mansion, but there's something about it that's really off, that it feels superficial. You would never believe that this was the original Adams Family house. <laughs> a lot of sodomy occurred in that house. Thing was an animal. Mm-hmm. Mm. 
Now, I heard that these were stories about you going to college. Isn't that true, Cameron? You were at college with me, so what do you think? <laughs> it, 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 I heard rumors, but I don't know if they're true or not. I don't know if it's appropriate, but I just keep wanting to hear lyrics to the piano playing. A kiss is just a kiss. <laughs> Play it again, Sam. Uh, but we're about to go in the orgy room. Play it, damn it. I want to hear it. Also, don't say God. <laughs> Uh-oh. Now, I do want to point out when this film was made in like late 74, 70, early 75, that we're pretty much done with the Hayes Code. And that, of course, the only European cinema was definitely going to go far ahead in terms of how explicit they can go. But by this point, it's like, okay, that's it. R-rated films and X is, on, X is there, all that stuff. So, yes, we, we just got our first conversation about cum. Okay. So she's going to tell the story through interpretive dance. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, this is what your wedding's going to look like, isn't it, Nathan? <laughs> I don't know what the rest of you guys are doing. How many of you guys are actually watch, listening to the Italian and trying to match it to her lips? <laughs> It's like a Godzilla movie with cum. <laughs> Cumzilla? <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah right. That's what need. Uh -huh. Well, no, no, no. That's a lie because she did say it got her from head to toe. So he knows exactly what kind of ejaculation. This yeah. guy's just a dick. <laughs> And also, like, if he's not talking about the job, if he's able to get from head to toe, I mean, that might be a pretty good-sized yeah. dick. I mean, we're talking like a fire hose here. Oh, shit. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen. That's one way of putting it. Pedophile. <laughs> Oh, I also forgot. When it came to Morricone, when he did the score for this film, he he was completely <laughs> disgusted by it, and he had to turn away while scoring it. It's it's kind of like, do you know the part in Naked Gun 33 and the 3rd, whenever yeah. Frank Driver would throw up and the composer was like... I just imagined him like that. <laughs> this was written by Paul Hargis, right? <laughs> I don't know how many people are going to get that. I know David does. Her, 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 her. Too many busy bodies. Wait, is she talking about cum again? I, Strange syrup? I think he's talking about piss. <laughs> I like that, though. Like, Don't you want to entice your lady, lady fair to be like, hey, do you want this, the other special juice? I don't want to know more what goes on. Well, that was quick. <laughs> Better consult the rule book. Want to make well, sure. To be fair, what was on his face didn't look like that much of a refusal. Nope. And I, I still want to reiterate, this is a film where all these young boys and girls had a ton of fun making. And like, can you imagine like if it, like a film like anything Adam Sandler makes or any of those other ones where they're like, yay, they're, they're, it's a happy time, so, but behind the set they hate each other and they're having a horrible, <laughs> miserable time. But this, when you're depicting horrible, terrible you, you've people. You've got to keep yourself sane. Yeah. It's, also, it's a good point. I would also like point. to add that while watching Solo, we've mentioned Michael Bay and Adam Sandler. <laughs> Maybe that's what he wanted, Pasolini. He was a he, he wanted was a, us to think of Adam Sandler. He was a visionary. One day, someday, <laughs> so fucking shit, they would come along. Yep, one. It's, it's a good point. <laughs> it gets to that. It was like, why don't we go and we're watching something about absolutely horrible, terrible men who talk about women's anus, but they. <laughs> They, they we talk about Adam Sandler and Michael Bay. Let's throw Uwe Boll in there. Why not? Why not? 
So this lady totally wanted to fuck him, and he's basically just like, you know what, you're too old and, and too not enough penis. So. And I don't want your butthole. <laughs> yep, here, drink my piss. Oh, no. Oh, jeez. But you see what I meant when it came to pornography? Like how if somebody else was... They would go for an even more bigger close-up than that? That other guy just can't stop watching. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is awkward. Oh, that, that 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 that's a girl, sir. Yeah, but 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 to be fair though, I mean you you're used to masturbating yourself, right? But how can you masturbate another guy? You don't know. It's, it's, it's a different like angle. It's all about the angles. Yeah. <laughs> and you're gonna have to learn. Okay, except the flu. <laughs> okay, pick your favorite libertine. Which is your favorite, Cameron? I'm the cross-eyed guy. The cross-eyed guy. Nathan, who's your guy? I don't know. I kind of like the bearded guy. kind of looks like uh, Gerard Butler. Yep, we're going with Gerard Butler. However, if we, there is a libertine that looks like Michael Brown, it'll be that one. Yeah. I'm going to go with the one that looks like Michael Jeter. <laughs> You know, the funny thing is, where we live, seeing them do that, it's, you could be, pretty much, they do that now, don't, do they not? Oh, um, there's a lot could, more yeah. fake yeah. smiling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. It's all about customer service here in Vegas. Yeah. Well, see, so you wouldn't see this. I mean, A, you know, we then all the plates would be served first. And B, they're not drunk enough to do something like this. Well, you were, but. Oh, pff, <laughs> Hey. <laughs> Now this now I think I've seen Keenan do this. Okay, the fact that you just said that and he just got into like a very Keenan like posture. <laughs> <laughs> well no, I was referring also to this. You do remember your back to the party. <laughs> ragazzi, ragazzi, now did I do this guys during the bachelor party? You tried. <laughs> You really tried. Well, what happened? We stopped you. <laughs> then you want to go into the Hershey store. Oh, God. Well, I wanted somebody to go up the Hershey Highway. Duh. <laughs> Don't make my brown eye blue. And somebody, somebody goes up to his butthole and goes, Hello, hello, hello. <coughs> like, all right. You did, however, do this. <laughs> what, make that face? <laughs> yes. Actually, <laughs> I've looks, seen you make that face He before. looks like a cartoon character. He looks like Mr. Burns. I am in heaven. Smithers, Smithers. Fuck my asshole, Smithers. Someone's going to get airtight. <laughs> well, are they going to teach some masturbation classes? They also forget to say this is a musical. For the I sing <laughs> when we're my father. <laughs> that chair does not look comfortable. No. Um, they're, they're just getting ready for the uh, ventriloquist act. <laughs> you know, I... He's one of my favorite filmmakers, but I'm gonna... Does anybody else kind of get a Wes Anderson vibe in terms of how it's framed? Yeah, well, that and, that and all the anal sex. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but no, I meant like just in terms of the symmetry, just a lot of, you know, shots where like the main, you know, like right in the center, that sort of thing, and like a lot of extra space and how it's usage of uh, of, of staging the actors and such. Well, Kubrick also did that too, a lot of that. Not so much in the anal sex, except for Clockwork Orange. And I might shut. <laughs> looks like I was riding the ventriloquist thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised nobody made a Michael Brown comment. Now, I'm going to Aww. drink this... I kid, Mike, I kid. Now, I'm going to drink this glass of piss while my friend here talks. Renata, 
Get out of my way, I'm going around the other side. <laughs> Man, he is still going to town on the, the cross-eyed dude's butthole. Ah, <laughs> uh, he's done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, somebody fighting Michael Caine. First of all, you go grab it just the right way, Mr. Wayne. <laughs> oh, man, the sun better not come up tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy Warbucks! You know, I don't, I don't like the Jamie Foxx version of Annie that much. <laughs> is it weird that the mannequin is better dressed than anyone else in that room? Oh, God, it is. <laughs> oh, my word. <laughs> I do want that coat, though. And can we all agree? Do, does does anyone else want that mannequin's outfit? I do. Yeah, Cameron, do you want that outfit? I would rather have the cross-eyed guy's outfit. Thank you very much. Ooh. Oh, he's loving it. Mm. There actually really is something really humiliating about it, though, don't you think? <laughs> Oh God! He's gonna tear that thing off. Gentle. Okay. Spit no, on okay. your hand to do it. No one is that rough with a dick unless they're wearing black rubber. <laughs> well, it's true. Hmm. Oh, this guy's jokes oh, are always wrong. Uh, Is this also a Keenan joke? I don't know. Let's see the punchline. <clears throat> Here we go. Got this is a long ass setup. Good <laughs> lord. I can't tell if he's looking straight into the camera or not. <laughs> I don't like I don't like educational jokes. That was a Keenan joke. And everyone No, would... Keenan would be a lot funnier. Yeah. It's all in the delivery. He, he Keenan would add the last line, oh I'm sorry, I guess you're not my friend. Aww. <laughs> no, cause no, cause the line went uh, six times eight, are you there are you there? Or six times eight, forty eight, and then Keenan's last punch part of the punch would be Oh, I guess you're not my friend. <laughs> oh goodness. Here's a really good, disgusting joke that I don't think they could have used in the movie. Okay, would they even know about this joke Maybe. in 1944, 1945? Maybe, because it's not date. There's no specific time frame in it. Here's okay. the way the joke goes. Here's okay. the joke, guys. Okay, so a lion's at a drinking hole drinking water, right? Uh -huh. A gorilla comes up to him and says, King of the jungle, I'm never going to get another chance like this. Comes up behind the lion, fucks him in the ass. Lions howling, go, oh, what the fuck, not again? All that shit. When the gorilla's done, pulls out, runs away. Lions in hot pursuit. Gorilla almost loses him. Goes into a human camp, sees a guy reading a newspaper there. Knocks the guy out. Puts on the guy's clothes and acts like he's reading the newspaper. Lion bursts into the tent. He goes, hey, have you seen a gorilla in here? The gorilla goes, you mean the one that fucked the lion in the ass? Lion goes, shit, it's in the paper already? <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't go with the other joke. Holy shit, a talking lion. <laughs> God, this lady is such a braggart about all the molestation she suffered. What would you like for Christmas, little girl? Uh-oh. I guess the dog's not having it. <laughs> all right, all this, hey, all, all, hey. All this talk about <laughs> anal sex, you know. Hey. See, that's what happens, ladies and gentlemen. If you get a dog, you know, talking to him about anal sex, he gets upset. That's what happens. He just doesn't find the term my sweet anus that romantic. Nope. <laughs> So is kidding. there a plot to this movie, or is it just kind of keep going it, like this? It's, it's just, just these rich sexual deviants doing exactly what they want. <laughs> yep. It's it's pretty much like almost every little student short film I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
But like I said, going back to it, it's like one of those where, you know, there are a lot of people who like this like this film, like in particular, you know, Mikkel Haneke, who won an Oscar for his film Amour. To, to, I'm not joking, David Cross says this is one of his favorite films of all time. So you do have like, you know, one an actual film director and then, you know, stand-up comedian, actor, you and know, Mr. Director. Show, noun director, true. So it's just interesting that you have these two, you know, guys coming saying this is their favorite film of all time so how do you recommend a film like this or how can you say oh this film is really good i like this movie because it's definitely easy to say this film stinks it's horrible there's no plot it's just disgusting that guy's still pissed the, the one kid didn't blow him right <laughs> he kind of reminds me of jim norton with that one story he told Monster Rain? Yeah, well, just like, like you know, not getting it done. Like, oh, I'm fine. I'm happy. Hey, come here, Poopy. Come here. There we go. There. That's okay, doggy. They don't talk about anal sex. Now, was this how you met your fiance, Nathan? <laughs> I wish it was that interesting. Nathan was the one telling stories about the first time when he was a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> so they're so they're tugging these two young. They're gonna marry them, but if he has sex with her, isn't he gonna lose a limb? Pretty much, yeah. Or are they allowed to because they're going to get married? Well, the, the thing is when it comes There's to... There's too many rules in the depraved house. <laughs> there are so many co rules and contradictions to those rules. This is like the Holy Bible. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, once again, I'm pointing out with Neil Pasolini being a, a Catholic and all, I wonder if maybe that could have been one of his little deals there. Like, well, there's so many rules that do conflict with each other. You yeah, can wonder about that, maybe. But it is one of those where when it comes to this, they present this this false, you know, rule book. Like, there are no real rules. They might have, like, a fake they rule. They save it for but... the reception, buddy. Come on. <laughs> now, this is like David's wedding. Yeah, Every, There's always a drunk uncle. Always. It was you were the drunk uncle, though. That is true. Because I do get drunk, and I am indeed an uncle. I'm the drunk Uncle Dave. There's always a drunk Uncle Dave. It's like he thinks making out involves grandma kisses. Yep. This this is three hundred, isn't it? <laughs> so this is whatever happened to baby Jane. <laughs> <laughs> Charmer, you know. I was thinking he'd be the kind of guy who'd buy your well, drinks. He's, well, he's got to compensate for the fact he doesn't have cross eyes. That is true. So, do you think of all the, the four libertines? He's the guy who, if they walked into a club, into a club, he'd be the guy who'd walk walk away with the girl. He's clearly <laughs> the Arthur of the group. When I'm talking to more <laughs> Arthur. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Let's have a nice little kiss. <laughs> So we went from, let see, Michael Bay, Adam Sandler, Dudley Moore. Dudley Moore. Okay, let's keep track. And a little bit of Maurice LaMarche. And Maurice LaMarche, yeah. <laughs> I hope this isn't a cock ring. <laughs> Knowing this film, it would be a cock ring with spikes. Aren't they all? Aren't they all? Seriously, Nathan, aren't they all? Pretty much. You know that scene in Temple of Doom? The ceiling coming down, the spider, that's, that's Okay, much dude, it. we get it. The guy disappointed you. You don't have to be so <laughs> pissy throughout the entire thing. <laughs> God, that guy is such a fucking party pooper. Oh, God, I regret saying pooper. <laughs> well, you said it. <laughs> But I don't want to lose a limb. You were very clear on the rules. Yo. 
Uh, which one? Ah, <laughs> uh, he gets both, both ways. Yeah. This would make for an interesting double feature. It's this and Cannibal Holocaust. Which? Or this and Aladdin. <laughs> <laughs> I can show you the world. That floor has got to be stone cold. Love, fascist Italian style. <laughs> <laughs> Where would I fuck it? Right here. I've done it. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no, no. I'm supposed to be grabbing you. <laughs> I just imagine somebody like Bertolucci or Mark Commode. Oh, there you go. See, they're not so such bad guys. They threatened that they you were going to lose, a, lose limb. a limb, but they're like, no, 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 we don't want you to lose a limb. Not yet, at least. Like, so what do they want them to do? Like, just me- just fuck with them. And like I said, I mean, this is, I mean, that's what Pasolini wanted to get. It's just this idea of just how power can can corrupt everybody. I, I really don't think this is the film that the Italian tourist bureau should use. Hello. <laughs> Is anybody in there? In there? So wait, uh, sir, all... you have cancer. So this movie just became the human centipede. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, oh, here comes oh, my Jesus. human centipede. Have you guys seen Human Centipede? Mm, I saw the yes. first one. First, uh, I actually kind of like the first one. It's, it's all right. It's all right. It's, it, right. it's kind of like this, where I'm, where if we had not done the character, I never would have seen this movie again. Mm-hmm. Have you seen? But you haven't seen the second one. No. Second Human Centipede two full sequence so, is. Probably the worst movie I've ever seen. In That's why we're life. going to see it. It is horrible. I'm not in like a so good, a so bad it's good kind of way. Like you can enjoy how awful it is. Like it's just a complete piece of see, shit. With, see, and that, that's what we wanted oh. before this started. That, and I was like, that's why I feel about Jurassic Park three. Jurassic Park three. Jurassic Park three. I love the first one. Jurassic Park three is awful. I hate <laughs> it. It's a bad movie. <laughs> Okay, come here. <laughs> Time to go to the so-called orgy room. And you can't touch any of the women. <laughs> Can you imagine, like, maybe this is, like, Kenny Hotz's favorite film? One of them. It's his favorite porno. Yep. Yeah, that's I'm referring to Kenny for suspending. You just imagine that this film did have Hitler just showing up. Be like, that's it. It's his favorite film of all time. This, but this movie takes place after Hitler's suicide, right? That's actually a very good point. Um, it said it took place in 44, 44 through 45. 45. So we're basically so, at the yeah. end of World War II. The very end of World War II. That, <laughs> that essentially this could be just essentially representative of of the end, like. The, the last atrocities of fascist Italy. That's what we're seeing here. Wait, so wait, do they ever bring up the war at any time? Or is it just kind of like... Basically, what you see is the war. That was deep. <laughs> these guys, you see, like, poetry. It these guys are getting prom night drunk. We're like, we're never going to see each other again, man. <laughs> First one to do a double decker in the bathroom gets yep. to go. <laughs> oh, and also we want to point out that we are drinking Mike's Hard Blood Orange. This is the first uh, commentary that we've brought in that alcohol. I should say Nathan has kindly brought in alcohol. Nathan, thank you very much. Oh, we had to start and, sometime. And uh, blood orange is what some of the people's anuses look like. Yeah, they don't. They don't. <laughs> they don't use lube in this one. They don't yeah. spit on their hand on their even dick. In, even in Brokeback Mountains, you they gotta do a Heath Ledger spit. style. Yeah. Yeah. Go. Bleh. Oh my god, that is so tacky wearing the same dress twice in two days. <laughs> oh my god. I feel bad for that Wolverine she killed to get that scarf. <laughs> Poor Hugh Jackman. Are they just using them as chairs? <laughs> yeah, that's that, 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 isn't that a UNLV party? <laughs> Especially for Cinefems? Oh, I, I kid Cinefems, I kid. You're the one who's getting in trouble for that one. I ain't defending. <laughs> yeah. 
I kid, I kid, Cinefems. You're all awesome. Even though I've, I've met a couple of you. <laughs> but you guys were nice. Oh, Daddy Warbucks has a new love. <laughs> Please don't ruin my perm. Is he going to find out when he bends her over if the sun will come out tomorrow? <laughs> oh, his bathroom's got a urinal. That's awesome. Wish I had a urinal in my bathroom. You're just so lucky I drank a lot of water this morning. <laughs> I just don't like to go alone. <laughs> Someone has to watch me or I can't go. I just I just love that what that image that they had where you just like look like the you know, the Madonna of Virgin Mary just mm -hmm. looking on and a for the prayer just looking over this, you know, debauchery. Or sewer muck hole. This is the weirdest Disney song. Now, Cameron, speaking of people sitting on the toilet, we were talking about Blumpkins earlier. <laughs> oh, yes. So ex ex Explain to the audience what a Blumpkin is. Okay, if you don't know, a Blumpkin is when you're getting head in the toilet while you're taking a shit. Now, here's my question. If the girl is taking a shit sitting on the toilet and giving a blowjob, is that called something different? I Basically a reverse Blumpkin. Yeah, reverse Blumpkin. Yep. And have you ever heard of AC Slider? Slidering? Oh, that's the when you're uh, facing the uh, other way when you're taking the shit, right? Yep, that's it. AC Slayer. <laughs> I've never heard of that before. That's a good one. <laughs> and right now, everyone's doing a screech. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, sometimes this feels like college. <laughs> it's like, you, you want a good grade? You want a good grade? You want a good grade? Here you go. Here you go. This does look like a fun movie to be in. Yeah. Like, well, like, as soon as they yell cut, did we just fucking do that? <laughs> yeah, they cut and they go, hee hee hee, we're all naked. I wonder how many takes I had to do. Oh, that's a good point. McTiernan, <laughs> McTiernan level takes. Oh, God. <laughs> we're, we're Kubrick level takes. Fincher level takes. I was like, that's it, we're gonna get this right. I don't care. This Fuck it, we'll do it live! I don't care if this is take 130. You need that like a real dog. Do you think all these actors and actresses, all the young, attractive like kids who are naked all the time, with, you know, behind the scenes when they weren't filming, you think they were just fucking all the time? To be honest, I wouldn't put it past them. Yeah. I mean, it's like, hey, we're naked all the time. We all look, we're all really good looking. Let's have some fun. <laughs> Wait, what did he do? Uh, he was just there. <laughs> okay. Seriously, he was just That's, there. That's, yeah. You don't talk about the people like that when the rocks are around. Oh, here's a lovely scene. And also, putting matches in bread? No, those are nails. Oh, those are nails. Oh, yeah. Okay, that makes more sense. I thought those were matches. I'm like, why is he putting matches in nope, bread? Nope, they're nails. And just to let you know, I, we have got some food, and um, we, there are nails in, in this food. We don't. I'm not telling you which one it is. It'll be a surprise. It's oh, the new Little Caesars oh nail-filled crust. Oh, God. Ugh. Ugh. My favorite! Mm. <laughs> it had a starburst in it. <laughs> I don't know if I like Italian facts of it's life. It's a delicious jelly donut. Speaking of which, what's the jelly donut, Cameron? <sighs> uh, a jelly donut is when you jerk off on someone's face and then punch them in the nose so their nose bleeds. Jelly donut, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe you'll practice that with your lover sometime. Your sex life boring? Add a jelly donut. <laughs> Looks like he's got a jelly donut hey, on his mind. Come here, man. Love you, buddy. Shard Butler's he kissing seems to be the only kid who's like enjoying this whole thing. You only live once. I had the time of my life. 
And I never <laughs> felt this way before. Nobody puts Franco in a corner. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, Lola. Hey. Girls! 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 <laughs> She's going to grace us with another lovely little story. How come she's the only one who gets to tell stories? I want to hear Cross-Eyed Guy's stories. He pro- he <laughs> I probably, bet he has some good ones. He probably has the best story. Like how his eyes got crossed. <laughs> Hell, I'm only about his best stories have nothing to do with sex. It's just weird shit that happened to him that day. <laughs> That's a good point, because he's, he's a short little guy with red, balding hair, cross-eyed, bad teeth. So, Something must have happened in his life. So today I wanted to go get some jawbreakers, right? The guy didn't want jawbreakers, or he didn't have them, rather. I wanted them. So I go halfway across town, and, you know, long story short, I killed three people. <laughs> hmm. It's like her stories are always like, oh, so my, my professor drank my pee. Oh, he <laughs> jerked off in front of me. After a while, talking about your, you know, prepubescent sex life gets a little boring. Seriously. <laughs> Cross eyed guy probably tells you awesome ghost stories. <laughs> Maybe that's what the film needed were a couple of ghosts. Couple of- okay, who wants to hear the story of the ghost of penis? <laughs> It'll sometimes fly up your butt when you're sleeping. <laughs> Look, tell the story of the flower in your hair. Yeah, that's a cool flower. Where'd you get the dress? That's yeah. a good that's a good dress. Even oh. she's getting bored with her stories. <laughs> Circle, Circle of shit. Circle of shit. <laughs> Which is what I think Nathan thinks of this film right now. <laughs> Am I right? That is not a completely inaccurate description. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, we've got ourselves a real winner right now, ladies and gentlemen. It's a nice, it's a nice dress. A nice black, sparkly. Okay, that is the worst makeup for a Motley Crue tribute brand I've ever seen. Lovey! Man, Divine did some weird movies when she wasn't with John Waters. <laughs> wait, 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 you're, 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 you're pointing that out as if it's something new? Without John Waters? Oh, but I do love that, that they that you hear in the background... You know, the planes going over and such that, yeah, we're, we are essentially approaching the end of the war. Essentially the end of Hitler, Mussolini. But I think, if anything, what Pasolini wanted to do with this film was just to say, hey, look, these, these assholes are dead, but it doesn't matter. These fucking pricks will live on and will continue to abuse and kill. I mean, in this case, you know, to show the innocent through young kids, but just to kill and abuse their power towards anybody. And that's not, and that's also not to suggest that, because you know what Roger Ebert used to say: a movie's not good because of what it's about, but how it's about it. So, so saying all that, that doesn't necessarily mean this film is good or bad. Just pointing it out. Betty White's sexiest role. Huh. I just imagine Professor Fegner showing his daughter this movie. You will like this movie. It is a great film, very important to Italian cinema. You must watch this film. She has a surprisingly healthy ass for someone her age. Mm-hmm. See, the cross-eyed guy knows where it's at. <laughs> his, uh, his eye just got uncrossed. Yep. <laughs> that will uncross anyone's eyes. I think that was a body double. A stun ass? If that actress was alive, we should probably... It would be good to ask her, was that your ass or was it a stunt ass? Couldn't we talk to the cross-eyed guy instead? <laughs> yeah, we'll ask him. Maybe he knows. It, it reminds me of in The Wicker Man, you know, the original... I'm sad to say, the original Wicker Man, when Brett Eklund does this dance, there's a part where it cuts her from behind and it's a stunt butt. How to get burned! How to get burned! Yeah, and Brett Eklund was mad because she she went to the director like, that is not my big butt. That is not my butt. Some big-butted whore. Well, maybe not whore, but <laughs> she did put an emphasis on how big the butt is. 
That's why when they remade it, Nick Cage insisted no butt doubles. Can you imagine Nick Cage remaking this movie? What, the Sallow? Yeah, just him running around torturing kids. He would have to be the cross-eyed guy or we're not accepted. <laughs> he would actually intensely cross his eyes and he'd do the pokey voice for you know from Peggy Sue Got Married. He would do that. <laughs> I'd watch that. So who would be in this? Okay, we got Nicolas Cage as the cross-eyed if we're, guy. If we're going to remake this, who are we going to cast? Yeah, well, Gerard Butler. Would you cast Gerard Butler? I'd cast Gerard Butler as the bearded guy. Steve Buscemi as, as one of the other guys, like the... The guy with the Probably the mustache voice. guy right there. Well, I mean, Crispin Glover as the mustache guy. Yeah. <laughs> and there we go. We, we got a movie. We got a movie. It'll make no money at the box office. None. But and, and Betty White is the chick who had, you know, drank piss when she was seven or something. <laughs> Can you imagine everybody in Hollywood fighting for that role? Like, no, no, no. I want to be the one who drinks piss. He's stroking it like it's a cat. <laughs> That's how cross-eyed perverts go, man. <laughs> he knows. He knows the score. What? <laughs> <laughs> I got caught up in the story and then it took Oh, a wait, turn. he's going to tell another joke. It wasn't very funny. <laughs> I think it's safe to say the cross eyed guy's our favorite character. Yes, because that guy has some stories to tell. I don't know. I think the Gerard Butler one, he's going to, he's going to do something and that's going to make you like him, Nathan. I think you know what I'm referring to, right, Cameron? I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. I cut off a fucking head. Hmm. Salo, or the 120 Days of Sodom, written by Harper Lee. And the one interesting thing that I noticed with the stories that are told, like how these episodes kind of get Bundy? darker. Why is that guy doing an Al Bundy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, sell shoes, shoot teenagers, same shit! I wonder if people run up to him and be like, I loved your role in Salo. What, was he ashamed of it? Well, I don't, I, I don't know. That's, it's, it's a good question. It, I mean, for me, like, I, I've heard nothing but positive things about like the, the kids working on the film, but just the older actors. I wonder how they, they ultimately felt about it. <laughs> okay, so this movie's dubbed, obviously. Yeah. It's dubbed. What if they weren't saying any of the stuff... That the ADR people were saying, mm -hmm. like she thought she was just telling this wonderful story about when she when she met a kitty when she was seven. Maybe. And then when they actually saw the movie, he's like, "I didn't say a goddamn thing about okay. piss or jerking off." <laughs> That's a trap. Oh fuck. He would have been a good like serial killer, right? If he went to wait, 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 wait. What well, do you what do you mean he would have? Okay, been. good. I know, I know. But it meant like he if you had him, if he came to America, you know he would have been cast in a bunch of really creepy roles. Mm -hmm. It's it's a I can't recall the name of the actor, but it's, it's it's a great pity that we haven't seen more of him. He I think he would have made a yeah I think he would have made a good transition into America. I mean, I don't know if he speaks English, but he has a good look. <laughs> I like how with the sound design that you can hear like the planes going over and just how it just intensifies. I'm starting to think these guys have some weird sexual proclivities. <laughs> so let's go over this again. Our first one we did was Star Trek The Motion Picture. Our second, Halloween 3. Third, this movie. <laughs> it's like an interesting little journey. You know, essentially going from like the creation of a potential new life to the, the two kids and potentially adults getting murdered to to this 
the death of innocence. Nathan, I hope next week you've picked a, a positive movie. Oh, oh, you could say that. Yay! <laughs> Wait, is that sarcasm? Oh, oh, I'm not saying. <laughs> well, you said you were going to say. Just not. No, yet. I'm not saying that. Okay, okay. here we go, Nathan. This is why you're going to like this guy. He's going to fuck the table. <laughs> He's gonna chop off his own dick. <laughs> the entire the Lonely Island song, like a boss, based on this guy. <laughs> Suck my own. D- um. Well, there you go, Nathan. It's a good one. <laughs> Isn't that what you did in Wagner's class? <laughs> but I wanted to do. And now this would actually be later referenced in um, the film. Uh, the interview, Seth Rogen and Ev- is it Evan Goldberg? Yeah. That there's a part where James Franco goes, "Oh no, we're we're gonna end up eating shit." You know, manja, manja, and it's a reference to this part. So that's why, ultimately, I can't dislike the interview because it had a solo reference. Now, at what <laughs> now? At what point are you gonna bring out the special food that you? Because it's if it's not now, it's coming. It's coming. <sighs> it's not now, but there's another Fuck. scene. Fuck. <laughs> Oh God! And I want to. Well, I, at least I hope that's not like a Baskin Robbins sample yeah. spoon. Okay, because <laughs> that's gonna take oh, forever. Oh God! Um, also, to those who have like the Criterion Collection DVD or Blu-ray, the cover art is this. Oh God, are you getting sick? I, uh, you said that the uh, the original. Oh, no, I'm not watching this. <laughs> oh God! Fuck you, ladies and gentlemen. Cameron just turned away. Give her, yeah. give her one more girl in a cup, and I'd watch the shit out of this. There it is, manja. There it is. And just so everyone know what he's, what she's eating it's is shit. Well, it is, but well, it's, what, what is it really? Tell them. Manja, manja. There we go. It's orange marmalade and chocolate. Well, that sounds nice, but I know what it's supposed to be in the movie. Yeah. But the thing is. Um, on when they were making it, the orange marmalade and chocolate. Apparently, it really did taste like shit. So their reaction, mm. yeah. I hope he at least gave her some peanuts for fiber. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> also, let everyone know that Cameron's getting sick. Well, no, Nathan, I'm, not, I'm not getting sick because my eyes are fucking yeah. closed during and this part. Nathan is Nathan is getting turned on for some I've reason. I've got my hand down my pants. Yeah. God, even my dog that, you know, even my dog who is one of the only dogs in the world that doesn't eat shit is repulsed. <laughs> uh, you said earlier that the uh, the original DVD of this is, like, really expensive. Oh, God, how, yes, you know, how yes, it's it just that rare. Now, no, yeah. now, here's the thing. Would Not the, that one, though. Now, did, the the value, yeah, yeah. did the value of the DVD go down when this one was reissued? No, I don't think so. It's actually kind of funny how it goes. Like sometimes you think that, like for example, in Earthbound, going to video games was released to the virtual console, that people thought, oh no, it would go down in price, and I don't think it necessarily did. Dude, you should have been jerking it off there. Hey. Oh god. Hey, you know what? Some people have a sense of pride and privacy. <laughs> oh god, now they're talking about eating diarrhea. Lovely. <sighs> Lovely. <laughs> yeah, we'll get your soup spoons ready. Yep. Everybody, if you got your little spoons, and I hope you guys are eating something along with this, something that does tie into to what we've just watched. <laughs> It'd be perfect. <laughs> no, you tell the story, Cross-Eyed Dude. You've got the best stories. I know you do. I just love how smug he is. Like, yep, I did that shit. Now, would it have been even better if he was able to maneuver maneuver his hips, you know, like turn it around? So it said, fuck you. Or maybe make this shit look like a heart or something like that. Have you smiley ever, face. Have you ever done that? Well, you know what? It's, it's really great that they're having Rice Krispie treats. <laughs> you know, that, that shows that on some level they're nice and wholesome. But as... A, oh, lovely. I know Cameron's, uh, he's anticipating this. If you expect me to eat whatever you have prepared during this segment, you're sadly fucking mistaken. <laughs> well, oh, we'll see. God fucking damn it. <laughs> That's the effect of Solo and our friend here. No, no, I was fine, and then I, because I, and I knew it was fucking coming up. 
I'm surprised there wasn't any dirty Sanchez going on during the dining room scene once everyone had to be butt fucked. <laughs> and look, it's your favorite guy. He's into into shit. Do you still like him even though he's really into shit? Yes, because he had the decency to go jerk off in another room. Actually, they're, they're both giving him his shit and asking for some cappuccino. <laughs> now, I think I remember reading somewhere that Pasolini, when he did this, it was his um, attack against consumerism, in particular, when it came to junk food, candy, stuff like that. Like, this is what Americans yeah. eat. Yeah, because you know this movie what? totally reminds me of junk food. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? That might have been what he's aiming for. But you know who did it better without using shit? Who? George Romero. <laughs> you know what? I want to do a commentary on, on consumerism. How am I going to do that? What if they live in a fucking? What if they live in a mall? And that's what I wanted to. I want to comment on consumerism. Let's have people eat shit. Yeah. You know, like Seinfeld's girlfriend. <laughs> Doris, the cute one who made a turd. Uh oh. Wait, so I thought they're angry wait. at her because she took a shit in her yeah, chamber pot, which is just, what it's there for. Yeah, she's supposed to save it. It's not meant for. The wait, now, wait, okay, where was later. that rule? They never said that in the beginning. Well, they now they're just making. Well, no, no, they changed up the rules. The previous scene had them changing up the rules. Well, I mean, the previous scene to the previous scene. All right, come on, show his butt. What, they're not allowed to wipe? Yep. <laughs> Do they know how fucking uncomfortable that is? I mean, I mean, yeah, I, I get it. These people are assholes, but come on. <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> that's that's you in a couple months, huh? <laughs> ah, here we go. Yep. Okay, so I prepared like a little snack for what's upcoming. So you see, I've actually kept it hidden. So, what I brought, well, what else? Here we go. Here's some Swiss rolls for Ooh, you. Swiss rolls. Here's some Swiss rolls. Swiss yep. Roll. Here we go. So we can all eat at the same time. Oh, I know. Here we go. Swiss rolls. Yeah. Here These have, you know, uh, you know, I, no, I think I can do it. Hold on. I'm just not going to have my eyes on the fucking screen. Okay, here we go. We're gonna, I'm going to eat when they start eating because they're starting to passing out the, the shit. I didn't realize oh. uh, Swiss rolls had pieces of corn in them. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Let's try it. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh. Um. That was a good Swiss roll. Oh, my God. Oh, so delicious. Mmm. Yeah, camera's looking the other way. He doesn't look happy. Oh, God. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah, I'm going to throw this away now. <laughs> That's it? You want another one? No. Mmm. <laughs> mm. Eat a bag of dicks. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> you eat that shit, Johnny. So are even the, uh... So mm. everyone's eating it. Even the, the yep. guys in charge. Yep. That's interesting. Yep. Nice. Mmm. Mmm. This is so good. <laughs> you guys don't know what you're missing. Don't get it on your dress. Mmm. <laughs> Got some in your teeth. Yep. Yeah, get some floss. <laughs> mm. Oh. This is so good. <laughs> you guys should stop complaining. It tastes really good. <laughs> what was...
So what do they do with the leftovers? Refrigerate them? Oh yeah. Mmm. <laughs> um. Mmm. And Cameron is not, he's far away. Oh, this. <laughs> okay, it's done. All right, Cameron, it's done. I don't believe you. It's done. Nathan, is it done? They're walking upstairs. Yep. They're done. The shit eating is done. So I want to put. No, it's oh God, I forgot about that part. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh God. Eat two bags of dicks. <laughs> I forgot about that part. <laughs> See, so, so wouldn't you rather be watching Jurassic Park three, Cameron? Actually, you know what? You want to know what the fuck I'm thinking? Yeah. No. I <laughs> Okay, now I think we're done with the shit eating, okay? And yes, ladies and gentlemen, I did buy a box of Swiss rolls so I can do this. My Swiss roll has peanuts in it. That doesn't seem right. No. <laughs> I hope you're feeling better, Cameron. Are you all right? Let's make it three bags of dicks. <laughs> And I do promise there's no more shit eating in this film. Don't make promises you can't keep. Don't let your mouth write checks your ass can't cash. <laughs> that is actually a very good point. Where it's like, I, but I swear, because I've seen this movie, oh god, a couple of times at the very least. But you, Why would anyone watch this movie a couple of times? <laughs> that's, like, uh, I don't, I, that's the thing. <laughs> as, as you know, stated... I'd rather see this movie than Jurassic Park 3, but I never wanted to see it again after the first time I saw it. <laughs> so that's ex so why did I want to see this? It's like, and obviously I'm seeing this like, I don't know if this is like the fourth or fifth time we've seen this film. So why did I want to see it so many multiple times? I guess it's just, I mean, well, the first time is just experience it. Then the it's, fourth time was to jerk off. <laughs> what about the, the two, the second and the third time? That was to keep yourself from jerking off. <laughs> Did you make your wife watch this movie, David? No, and I, I told her about this, and she wants to see it, but she is kind of scared to see it. In fact, um, I know they're... What, does she, have, does she have a weak stomach? <laughs> yeah. Then, I would, uh, you know what? Yeah, have her watch it, David, and do the Swiss roll thing with her. <laughs> do it. Um, I was, I was going to say... Um, do that instead of eating three bags of dick. Uh, Roger Ebert stated in, I believe, 2010 that he had a Laserdisc copy of Salo, but he did not want to see it. He was afraid to see it. He had never seen it? He had never seen it, and I don't, and I, I'm pretty certain to, to when he died that he didn't get a chance to see it. Yep. He never said it, he never put it in any of his top ten film lists, did he? Oh, no, he never saw it. Good. I don't think he saw it. I mean, like I said, it's going back to the whole thing. Like, how can it's it's so hard to say that you love a film like this? I think it is, and it's well, yeah, but for this, yeah, but you and I think that for different reasons. Hmm. Which is oh, no PlayStation controller. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that was the remote. El doggy is like that's it. I want this film to end. Yeah. Oh, she's so cute. She just wants to eat Swiss rolls. Oh, <laughs> beauty. <laughs> You're just using my dog to, just, dog to distract you at this point, aren't yes. you? Yeah. <laughs> yes, because I don't think Nathan's a fan <sighs> of this movie. <laughs> okay, now this is the part that you talked about with the lemonade. Yeah, this is, but unfortunately, I don't have any lemon. Oh, and there's some shit. I don't have That's any. That's a giant shit bucket. Yeah. And that I, I don't have lemonade. <laughs> In case anybody's wondering what that high pitched sound is, it's the sound of my dick screaming. <laughs> The human pregnancy test. <laughs> <laughs> Some people pay really good money for this kind of treatment here in Vegas, I tell you. <laughs> and Nathan offers it at a fair price. <laughs> can you can you imagine Hart Fagner showing this film and everybody like walks out? <laughs> <laughs> He 
has never been happier. I think when this movie is over and I go home, I'm going to cleanse myself by watching Christopher Reeve's Superman. <laughs> Just to go from absolute, utter, disgusting depravity to Superman. Now, if Superman was around, he would save them from all the piss drinking and what? Well, piss drinking. We're not going to bring Superman into this. We're not bringing him in. I'm, I'm just saying what I'm I'm doing. bringing him into this because I want him to save the day. And that's what happened. It's like. I think one of the big factors with why people don't like this film is that there's nobody there to save these kids. I mean, this is it. The entire well, film, from beginning to end, these kids are fucked. Well, see, that's the thing. I, I like movies that are like that. Like, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, nobody's going to save those kids. There's nobody to save them. But at least there's like an opportunity for, their, for them to, to escape. They're trying to save themselves. They're trying to save themselves, but they're fucked. I mean, even Sally Hardesty... She, I wouldn't call what she. I would. I would say that Sally Hardesty at the end of the movie would have been better off dead. But in this yeah. movie, they're they're not even trying to save themselves. The yeah. only kid who did that got shot. Yeah. And now no one's doing anything about it, so it's just kind of the same. <laughs> Pardon my pun. The same shit over and over again. <laughs> it, it it also reminds me like I, I'm not a big fan of the film The Passion of the Christ, and the reason why I'm not is because the because you hate Jesus. No. Maybe that's, that's reason, it. No, that's the reason. Maybe I that's don't. it. That's David. the reason I don't. Want to <laughs> oh, it's no Dawn of the Dead on um, Romero's all of Romero's Dead trilogy. Yeah. They don't. The humans, except for Day of the Dead, the humans don't get to win. But at least there's an attempt to try to survive. To escape. I would say technically the uh, well, not escape, but the kids are just trying to survive in yeah. this movie. True, true. It's but as I was getting with Passion of the Christ, the reason why I'm not much of a fan of that film is because I think it's inside we see somebody getting tortured and beat up for like two hours, and we want to see somebody save the day. It'd be like if we saw Die Hard and John McClane gets the tar beaten out of him for two hours. He does. Then, no, 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 no. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. He beats the bad guy and saves the day. He gets his wife back. And and this would be like he gets tortured and then, oh, he gets shot in the head. He dies. The entire audience would be okay. pissed. And I know that I mean, it's the story of Jesus, but then you begin to think to yourself, is it a story that necessarily has to be told for like okay. two hours? So long story short, next time you want to watch Passion of the Christ, watch uh, Monty Python's Life of Brian instead. <laughs> That's a very good point, yeah. Or The Last Temptation of Christ or The Gospel According to Matthew, which... Pierre Paolo Pasolini directed. Or and it doesn't feature, to the best of my knowledge, anything involving eating shit. Or Superman. Hmm. Or the Iron Giant. Or E.T. Or Man of Steel. Uh -oh. Please no. <laughs> yeah. You're tempting me, you know that, right? No, but I've already, but I've already I've already, no but I, I've already picked what my next movie's going to be. Yeah. yeah, I'm surprised that Cameron wants to torture Nathan as opposed to me, since I'm the one who picked this film. <laughs> oh, you'll get yours. Oh, Jesus. Oh, he's just buying his time now. Yep. You have no idea what's in my arsenal. <laughs> oh, God. Wait, in your arse? Arsenal. Oh. See, well, well, because I'm seeing because yeah. of all these asses in the air, you gotta... You have, this isn't even my final form. <laughs> oh, shit. But you know what? If you want, I'll be nice and I'll send you a link to my D uh, DVD of Fis my action. No, now it's called Film Aficionado, page so you can... Take a wild guess at what will at one point be in store for you. I'm not going to tell you when. Wait, which, which is this? Where do I take a look? I'll, I'll send you a link. Okay. But here's the thing. I'm not going to tell you when it's going to happen. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what it's going to be. Mm. But it's coming. Okay. <laughs> It'll be fun. Now, I want to pose this question to you guys since they're mm -hmm. judging asses. What to you makes a great ass? Okay. Yeah, okay you, I'm, I'm going to actually be 100% serious. Yes, I am. Okay. Yeah. It has to be both proportional to the person's body okay. with some nice shape to it, you know? Okay. Like, let's see. Like, l let's name some, some examples. Who has a great ass? And we're including both men and women. Okay, well, I'm going to put them in different categories then. Okay. Okay. Not of men and women. But since but. <laughs> I gave what my definition is, uh -huh. did Nathan, do you have a different definition? I'd agree with that. Okay. Nathan, <laughs> do you want to go first since uh, you've played the infamous horn dog in every movie? For, for who has a great ass? Yeah. Like who was like, the judge asses, yeah. Hmm. I would say an example of a of a, somebody who has an ass, I don't get the, everyone says, oh, that, that, that chick is a great ass. Like, Kim Kardashian, I think, is a, it's, yeah, it doesn't, it's, it's not, it's, yeah, there's no, no, there's, there's nothing to write home about. Yeah. Same thing with, uh, what's her name? Um, 
Iggy Aztec or Izzy Azalea? <laughs> yeah. Iggy Azalea. Iggy Azalea. Yeah, whatever the fuck her name is. I, she, like, she's like, she's like, oh man, she's got such a big great ass. Like, no, it's not. It's not that great. It's big. It's just not great. I have never seen enough footage or photographs of Iggy Azalea to, to judge uh, her ass. I guess go home and watch Jennifer Lopez's booty fit. Video. Jennifer Lopez seems to be like the gold standard. Yeah, I think. but I think I've seen better asses. Okay, like, let's see. I feel weird saying this considering I'm in the process of making a uh, feature. Okay. You realize. Okay, all right, well. Nathan, go first. <laughs> Wait, I, got this, I got a gun to this kid's head for no reason. I'm trying to... Well, because he's got the best ass. Wait, no, didn't... Wait, are they going to kill him because he has the best ass? I, th- I believe so, yes. Let's see. Oh, da 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 You honestly think I'd kill you because you have the best ass? Well, Steve Buscemi loves asses. Well, to be fair, have you seen you? (laughs) Alright, so are we going to get to who has a great ass? I want Nathan to go first. Of who has a great ass? Yes, we're still (laughs) pressed to say we haven't Um, judged who their great ass is. J-Lo's up there. J-Lo, okay. Jeremy Lopez. Beyonce is not too bad, I guess. Beyonce, okay. Um, Let's see. Cameron Mannheim. (laughs) 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 Melissa McCarthy. (laughs) I'm going. <laughs> oh, Aw, we kid, we kid. You gonna say Kathy Bates <laughs> about Schmidt? Oh God. Oh, there's an ass. So Cameron. Okay, do you know? Do you want both male and female categories in this? Might as well. Nathan hadn't done any guys. Yep. Oh, um. Yeah. No, I haven't done any guys. <laughs> done it, and probably Thank won't. Thank you, Cameron. Um, probably. Uh. <laughs> Wait till you get to Hollywood, honey. You know when when Chris Pratt came out in Guardians of the Galaxy when he's going to the prison and he's got those little yellow shorts on and they're hosing him down. <laughs> you know what? That's a good choice. That's, I'm going to agree with you on that. Uh, I got one for you. George Clooney and Solaris. When he showed his ass, he's got a nice beefy ass. He has a he's he's got a nice uh, bad ass and. And Batman and Robin. Oh, and yeah, I forgot the, about that. And they I, do okay. the close-ups of them putting everything on, okay. and he all, picks honestly, up those I, Batman and, and things. And no offense to George Clooney on this, I think that's 90% Batman suit. Mm-hmm. What about Christian? Are you saying he padded his Batman suit? No, I'm saying the bat suit was molded to be the perfect thing. <laughs> what about Christian Bale's ass? You see that American Psycho? How do you compare that to George he Clooney's ass? He was in ass? really good shape in that Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, what is this outfit? This all of a sudden, though? we're watching M.A.S.H., that's like they're going to do a performance of Pirates of, Pirates of Penzance. Oh, they do a performance of La Cage aux Faux. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, thank you for being a friend. <laughs> bow, now, now, now. Travel is it, down the road and back again. Is it too much to say that this is so far the weirdest part of the movie? <laughs> do you think it's this is probably going to be the weirdest film we've seen? We're, now we're gonna have to top ourselves. Like, what's well, the weirdest? Well, we've only seen two other movies before this. True, true. But neither one was all that weird. Yeah. But uh, yeah, wow. it's got those hoop earrings. <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord! Originally, actually, he almost did that. The crosshair guy almost did get an American role, but B. Arthur beat him out for the role of Dorothy Sporting. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, Cameron, great asses. I think Rosario Dawson is a great ass. Rosario Ooh, Dawson. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. You gonna bring some women wrestlers into this? Actually, I was I'm going to, I was going to I think that um, this re- uh, wrestler used to be with a uh, TNA uh, Velvet Sky. Oh yes, I remember like people making uh, Trish about Stratus. Her. If we're gonna go wrestlers, Trish okay. Stratus definitely. Um, uh, currently, she's known as uh, Paige in WWE. I think I think Paige is a nice ass. <laughs> Or the you know who's a, you know who's the other one I remember like remember Molly when they talked about how she had yeah. a terrible ass yeah. like she was a fat ass and you look and you go no, no, no she's no, a curvy a, lady yeah. and she's like she's fine she's a pretty lady and I remember her in interviews talking about that going this is just well she's more polite about it just how much horse shit it was to tell yeah. people I'm a fat ass and this is how you're th- supposed they, they to look they did the same thing to Mickey James too. Oh god, that was Of course, I'll, however, I will say this. In the case where they did it with Mickey James, it was too it was um uh, God, I can't. It was Michelle McCool and uh, 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 Layla. And the funny thing is, being, Layla. And they, were be, and, and they were being, you know, the prototypical um, 
bitchy, popular high school girl characters. Yeah. So in that case, I can see it better than when they were doing it to Molly. Yeah. But what was also strange was the fact that Layla and, herself is a curvy girl. Yeah. Her herself could be a candidate. But the weird. The, but I would also say that the reason that I think that one worked better than when they did it to uh, Molly, because when they were doing it to Molly, it was when she was a heel. <laughs> It was when they were doing it to Molly is when she was a heel, correct? I can't point out that we haven't even... Wait, are they going to do the, the uh, Ark of the Covenants, Covenant ceremony? <laughs> it's beautiful! This is the weirdest Weird Al music video. But, um, seriously, uh, when they did it to uh, Molly, wasn't Molly being a heel at that point? Yes. So they were, so they were using her size as, like, um, uh, an insult. The good guys were using it. But when they were doing it with Mickey James, it was clear that the asshole characters were the ones doing it. True. So I, th- I yeah, think with but... that one, it gets a pass because none of the announcers were really saying it. But the Molly one was just terrible. Molly one was just me because they were just they were using that as a reason to make fun of her. But with um, Mickey James, it was a different situation because it was the heels who were doing it. So Solo or the 120 Days of Sodom. Oh, so you're done. So you're done asking me. About favorite asses? I think so. Okay. Because we gotta... You're going to bring up any guys. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, no. Oh, yeah. well, I agreed with you. You said well, he's Chris Pratt, Christian Pratt. Bale. Who Cor- else? Oh, who? Oh. Daniel Craig. Does he? Yeah. yeah. James Bond. And I'm agreeing one. with you too easily on that one. Yeah. <laughs> what about Ray Fiennes? I think he's got a great ass. <laughs> okay, you now you're just being gay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, honestly, I could go all day listing off um, women who I think have superb asses, but at some point I'm going to get into names that nobody recognizes. <laughs> and the list goes on and on and on. I actually have an entire um, a folder book dedicated to asses. <laughs> no, it's more like an encyclopedia with pictures and diagrams and, you know, predator-style thermal pictures. You know, I th- what am don't I- look, Marion. Whatever you do, don't look. He kind of he kind of looks <laughs> like uh, the curtain dress from uh, Carol Burnett. <laughs> long ass shoulders. So that's who cross-eyed guy is supposed to be, Carol. I want that outfit. For the- <laughs> well, Halloween. Yeah, oh, I want that one too. Seriously, he looks like the guy at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Belloc. He looks like Belloc. That must hurt on him, don't you think? <laughs> like, and cut. Get this off of me. The guy with the mustache is like, I am yep. so through with this there's, shit. There's George Harrison in the back. Oh, well, okay, but what about you, Dave? What about your asses? <laughs> my, my, I only have one ass. Your favorite ass is you put me and Nathan on the spot. Oh, goodness. Who am I? I like Layla. She had a, you know, mm-hmm. from wrestling. She was pretty good. Um, oh, goodness. Who else? I was unprepared. <laughs> Uh, God, he does look like George Harrison. Oh, I got one. I got one. Um, oh, f- I forgot her name. Shoot, she's. You only a- know her ass. It's- That's sexist. <laughs> no, she's so Sasha sexist. Gray. Sasha Gray. She's oh yeah, a- the porn star. She's a very skinny girl, like from the. But she's got experience. an ass. Yeah. <laughs> okay, no, you can laugh all you want, but that chick has an ass. Yeah. <laughs> Think objects have been shoved up it multiple times, but it's still a <laughs> nice ass. <laughs> my wife has a nice ass. I love my wife's ass. I thought we were only talking about famous people. Oh, okay. She's famous to me. <laughs> She's the star of my life. Oh, Dave, you got a little bit of brown on your nose? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because... So does everyone in this <laughs> movie. <laughs> yeah. So what, they're doing like wedding night fantasies? Is that what Why this don't is? we do it in the road? Yep. I said what, what? In the butt. I said what? Well, <laughs> in the butt. Ah. Ow. Ow. Try to stay in bounds, guys. Come on. God, he's really going to town on that ass. <laughs> he's not even no. He's not even doing it. Boo. Yeah. Bad form. I feel like Catalina could have done this a lot better. <laughs> so what you thinking? <laughs> Could oh, you, um, the, could you, you pass know, the preparation H, please? Do you know that um, what has recently caused you know um, like WWE fans to be really pissed off with the company recently? What's that? Hey, I, t- okay, think of the last thing it could possibly be, and just use that as your guess. Um, uh, no transgender wrestlers. No, what it what it was was um, I think a couple months, uh, not a couple months, like maybe last week or the week before on Raw. There was a Divas match, and it was only 30 seconds. Oh, I know about this. And it was two of the best female wrestlers that WWE has signed losing to the Bellas. And I, that made people snap. 
to the point where um, even Vince McMahon took notice of yeah. it. And um, also, I don't know if you heard this one, but um, AJ Lee then tweeted to Stephanie McMahon about how the female wrestlers are paid so much less and get less screen time and are treated like second-class workers. Wasn't she inspired by Patricia Arquette's Oscar speech? But but that's the thing. No, that's the part I'm getting to. Uh People thought it was a work based on that. Yeah. But apparently, it was a shoot. AJ dropped her own real deal pipe bomb. Can we agree that's a pretty big dick? (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Like, where do we go? Yeah, Peter Vince McMahon. Yeah, he's a pretty big. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can be. <laughs> I would. I would call the buck tooth beaver fuck boy Kevin Dunn oh, yeah. a bigger dick. Yeah, I find you. I find you tiresome, Jim. I wish Jim. I, I I love the way Cornette tells that story. Everyone else was laughing, but except for Jim Ross, knew I was really gonna fuck up Kevin Dunn. Yeah. <laughs> and I just imagine Jim Ross just sitting there going. No, he's going to do it, and he's just going to do it, and always I, find fault with it. See, that's the thing. I like how Jim Ross has moved on, but he's doing other wrestling things. Yeah, like uh, for that, um, uh, the New Japan uh, wrestling thing, their pay per view, their one that uh, they did with uh, Jeff Jarrett's promotion. Mm-hmm. JR called that entire pay per view. Wow. By himself? No, with uh, Matt Stryker, who's oh, also cool. A, who's also a pretty good announcer, I think. So, so solo. <laughs> Look, they ate shit and nearly vomited. Give me wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> and they got fucked in the ass. Or he got fucked in the but ass. See, but see, no, no, no. Let's not equate gay sex to eating shit. Let's not equate that to each other. I wonder if that actually did happen if there were, you know, some gay right organizations who saw this and were just like equating like, oh, they're, you know, they're having sex with other, you know, other men, other boys. And it claims that, that these are horrific <laughs> characters and therefore reflects negatively on gay people. No, this reflects negatively on everything. Yeah. And that's what, like, one of the points of the film is, essentially. Just like, I don't know. But you, you, you always get that one group, right? That will just look at something and just go, Ugh. Because there are always people who are just waiting in the wings to be offended over something. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I remember, because I'm looking at my King Kong post, remember when the Peter Jackson remake came out? Do you remember that there was like a little small black group that talked about how it was racist towards black people? What, King Kong? Yeah. How? Because of it's a big gorilla. So? Well, shouldn't they have been oh, offended no, 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 no. for the last 70 years that the original King Kong has yeah. been out there? Well, they were originally offended. When it came to that, maybe not, the, not necessarily the big ape, but how the islanders the, were um, you know, portrayed... I mean, that I can understand. But that's but the thing is, how, how are they... He's a giant ape! How are they going to get mad at the... What? <laughs> yeah. It's just the idea of equating, you know, like a gorilla with, you know, black no, people, no. unfortunately. Well, but here's the thing. When I saw King Kong, you know, what, you know what I equated King Kong with? A gorilla. <laughs> yeah. That's literally all it was. Just a big monkey. Um, no. Gorillas are apes. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. It's planet of Dem I, Apes. I, I, I'm one of the only people in the world that, that far prefers Jackson's uh, King Kong to any other version. I love Jackson's version. I like the King Peter Jackson's King Kong. Yeah. I, I, I find it very entertaining, even though I think you could easily cut out half an hour or more and it'd be the exact same movie. Jimmy? <laughs> I, 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 Jimmy? Jimmy! Little Jimmy! I, th- I th- honestly, I think one of my favorite parts is both heartwarming and hilarious. If you look at it in a context, oh What's shit, that? something's about to happen. Oh, oh wait, these are two girls getting oh, on. Okay, I just want to point out my, that my wife walked in and she just took a look at what's going on and she made a very disgusted face. <laughs> I don't know, honey, do you like what you just saw? Oh god, she just glared at me. <laughs> David's in trouble. Or should I say... David's in trouble. So the rules of the house are, if a guy, if one of the See, boys that's... has sex with a girl, he loses a limb. Yeah. If the two girls are having sex with each other, what happens to them? Yeah, but what happened was it got her out of trouble when she said, oh no, some people are having sex. Yeah, but why would she get in trouble in the first place if she didn't break any rules? Because they're jerks. Fascist jerks. But anyway, with the, the scene in King Kong I was talking about, fuck Solo. Yeah. <laughs> the scene in King Kong... <laughs> This, this Not my a... wife. <coughs> oh, what? Oh, wait, what? Never mind. Oh, that's right. It's... Yeah, but, it's, but he's wait. one of the soldiers. He's one yeah. of the guards, so who cares? Oh, he said, yeah. Run! But what happened was the scene in Peter Jackson. No, wait, why do the rules apply to him? He's a soldier. He's still having sex. 
Evet. Yunanini, you can't shoot him now. What the f... What is going on? This makes no sense. I guess it's his way of pleading, like, don't shoot me, or like, we're going, like, I'm defying it. But why is he subject to the rules? Because they're jerks. But he was one of them. It doesn't matter. It's like so. It's like once again, it's the idea of, of power, right? It doesn't matter. Like the like they can they can go kill anybody. It's like oh, you're one of us. I don't care. Bam, you're dead. You did the nasty. God, I'm never gonna hang out with these guys. <laughs> well, thankfully they're dead. Because you were going to hang out with them before. Well, yeah, they look like, especially cross-eyed guy. But the fact he let this happen. Uh, what was the scene from King Kong? Oh, the one where um, he and Anne are on the ice. King oh, Kong. yeah. I, lo- I love, that, I love scene. that scene. But the thing that gets me is how the army chooses then to attack him. It's like, sir, sir, we caught up with King Kong, sir. What's he doing? He's butt skating. No, no, he's, he's, he's frolicking. <laughs> Dear God. Fire at will. Sir, he looks relatively... What the fuck did I just say? <laughs> you said fu- then fire. Or maybe they, or maybe they're watching. They're going, oh, isn't that cute? Okay, <laughs> kill him. Yeah. But no, I see. Do. For some reason, I remembered it being one of the students fucking one of the mm-hmm. other women. Mm-hmm. Oh, but as I was saying, I do prefer the the thirties original to the Jackson one. But I do think that the Excuse me. The Jackson version is one of the remakes, adap- you know, readaptations, whatever you want to call it, that is, you know, could be considered just as good as the original. You know, it joins that group like, you know, like The Thing, The Fly, films like that. And Danky Kang. And Danky Kang. <laughs> Pine of Dim Ape. <laughs> You'll have to wear the diapers of shame. I just, <laughs> I just love cross eye just because he always has that. His look. eye, wait, it's. I thought the other eye was cross eye. Now the other one is. <laughs> well, but just because of how his eyes are crossed, but also he always has that smile on his face. It's just ugh. Wasn't your mole? Nobody gives yeah. a shit about your story. <laughs> I had a mole. <laughs> Nobody gives a shit about your stories, cross eyed guy. <laughs> Give cross eyed guy the mic. I'm sorry, but your lizard <laughs> seems limp. I think this is the third hag telling the story. I don't care about any of the hags. I want the cross-eyed guy. <laughs> I know what's going to happen. We're going to go, you know, get on a plane to Italy and find cross-eyed guy and put him in your movie, huh? <laughs> he might do it. I mean, what else is he doing? I don't know, rotting? Aww. What? He's probably dead. Maybe. I don't know. I think some of the other actors are still alive, like the older actors, but I don't know. I'm, I'm curious what happened to this guy. So, once again, Salo. Okay, so how does V'ger fit into this? <laughs> I don't know. This, is there a conspiracy involving Silver Shamrock? I want that suit. I've never so many seen so many people fanning interest, at least since advanced directing. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good scene. That was good. I could direct better than that. Yeah, that was a good scene. <laughs> I just imagine a bit from advanced directing where they talk about this this scene. Where they're talking about this is great direction of actors and such. You can learn a thing or two from this. Well, I will give this. They made Tim Curry look wonderful. (laughs) (laughs) What? (laughs) Distracting ourselves with a poopy puppy? I have to to stay sane. (laughs) Yeah. How long is this movie? Good God. It's like a a couple minutes shy of two hours, I believe. Okay. That's not too bad, I guess. Yeah. Well, at the very least, we're getting different shots as opposed to Star Trek, where it's like, you know, goes on. Cutting on, back to reaction on. shots. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was just hilarious. 
You know what this reminds me? Actually, could you, um, Cameron, could you do me a favor? Could you tell the story about a certain guy we both know concerning Rambo? Because I think, I think this does relate to this film, I think, in a way. Okay, so there's some douchebag. He will, well, he's going to remain nameless. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> so I'll just give him the first name and last name. The, this fucking douchebag. Um, Esquire. A, a friend of mine asked for some uh, recommendation of good Vietnam movies. And everyone started listing them, and then I'm, and they all took place in Vietnam. As you know, a Vietnam movie should. So then I say, you know, one people, one Vietnam movie that no one has mentioned, even though it doesn't technically take place in Vietnam, is First Blood. It's more of a movie about what happens to the vets afterwards and PTSD and all that. And fucking douchebag Esquire pumps and he goes, well, actually, if you see, First Blood is really just an action movie that exploits oh. what happened in Vietnam. It's really just a pointless action movie filled with nothing but high body count and all that. And then I said, oh no, you're, you must be mistaken. Yeah, uh, I because I could, would would agree with you that Rambo two and three do that and exploit Vietnam and are just big action movies with high body counts. But First Blood, he doesn't kill anybody, and it's really about you know a guy who's already on the end of his rope, just completely letting go, being pushed too far. No, no, I understand all that. I just say that blah 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 blah. blah. Blah, 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 blah. And this is actual dialogue, I'm pointing out. I, I, no, I'm not going to repeat this actual dialogue because I don't want to fall the fuck asleep. Mm -hmm. And of course, this guy also runs a film blog and all that stuff. I found his film blog, and it's the most, oh, really? bo most boring, pointless, exhausting tripe that you would expect from someone that just loves the smell of his own dick sweat. Yeah. But then when you asked your friend about No, this, then I asked uh, the friend who originally posed the question, like, who the fuck is this guy? And he goes, oh, I don't know. He might have been somebody I taught. Mm -hmm. uh, so you just add people you don't even know. Kinda. <laughs> even assholes. <laughs> But then there was something where you, he later made like a statement walking out of a class, or he remembered oh, yeah, okay. who it was. I rem I figured out who it was because I ended up t I ended up I did know this guy. I took a class with him. It was a European film class, and the day of we were watching uh, Wings of Desire. I can't. It was a, a Vin. Who's in the name? Vim Fenders. Vim Fenders, the director. And um, if you don't know what Desire is, it's a good movie, but it was also adapted into a U.S. movie called um, City of Angels. Yep, Nicolas Cage Sorry, and, and Meg Sorry, Ryan. And uh, Meg Ryan. And um, he, uh, the professor mentioned that uh, before the movie came on. And, once, and even if you didn't, if you watched it, you would be able to figure it out. Yeah. And, it was a, and let me just say this. I enjoyed the movie. Uh, there was nothing wrong with it. I enjoyed it. Thought it was a fun movie. Oh, cross-eyed guy, awesome! <laughs> <laughs> but it was. A I fun love his knife sheath on yeah. his thigh. Oh, oh god! Oh, ship's going down! Oh god! <laughs> uh, what were you gonna say? Because it kind of fits a, into this. But uh, it was a fine movie, Wings of Desire. But as we're walking out, this fucking douchebag Esquire says, "Well, that's why you can't really trust Americans to make a good." Film. I only watch European movies. They're the ones who know who to do it right. <laughs> and ah, uh, I've never wanted to both punch someone in the taint <laughs> and <laughs> call them an idiot and give them a list of academic academic reasons why more than in that moment. Hmm. And 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 without giving any more th of what this guy is away. Think of your cliche film student, every single negative physical stereotype you can, that's him. Hmm. And, and, and the reason why I ask is just because related to this, you do wonder if some people who do legitimately like this movie, the only reason why they like it is because it is a European film, it's a foreign language film, and it's not American. Because the thing is, because I have a huge film library, I have like over a thousand films, and the thing is, I have a film like this in my library, yes, but I also have a bunch of other films. I've got the works of, um, of What's I got James right now, Nathan. Got James Bond, James Cameron, <laughs> the usual. Yeah, yeah Nathan, apparently the dress is just so many different colors right now. <laughs> Nathan is tapped out essentially. That's it's even for Star Trek, he didn't tap out, but he tapped out for this one. 
Because we... how he has a special viewing chair mm. and robe that he wears to watch the torture <clears throat> scenes outside. Yeah. But I must ask, since we are approaching the, the end of the film, Nathan... Oh, what? thank God. It's near the end. Yeah, so what do you think of this movie? <laughs> oh, it's, you know, it's, it's actually not bad. It's just, um... Oh, God. And it's kind of interesting... Oh, that tongue is so fake. Look at that. It looks like he has a piece of ham in his mouth. Ugh. That's really fake. Yeah. Uh, oh, God. But it's so hot. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, I mean, Solo after dark. Oh it's my. kind of an interesting idea, mm-hmm. but they don't do anything with it. It's just it's just the same stuff over and over again. It doesn't really go anywhere. Kind of like what? It's, it's not bad. <laughs> yeah. It's just... Yeah. It's, it's sort of like that. You can tell that it's made by somebody who does know what he's doing, right? That isn't just some, you know, some schlock who decided, okay, I'm going to make a movie where people get tortured and raped and such. It's just like, how how many times can you watch torture and rape? Yeah, that that goes back to the whole thing, like, how how, how much can you watch somebody get beat up without somebody there to save the day? There are no heroes in this film. Well, it's not just that, but it just, like Nathan's saying, it's just the same beat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Over and over again. There's no And the filmmaker can say over and over again, oh, I'm commenting on this on society, I'm commenting on this, and it's like... Who gives a fuck? Like, yeah. It would be great if somehow his binoculars were also cross yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But once it, it you know goes back into the what Ebert said, a movie is not good just because what it's about, but how it's about it. And it is one of those movies that I mean, like I said, I have watched this film about at the oh god, at least like four or five times. I'm a little wincing, ugh, a little bit. That was a good effect. Oh god. Mm-hmm. Ugh. But, yeah, it's... T- contact lenses out. <laughs> it's a very hard film, I feel, to recommend. I can't, I can't say that I would recommend it without a big sigh hesitation and then a big long speech about the movie. I do. It kind of reminds me, only in this aspect, of when I saw <laughs> Antichrist. Oh, that's a good I example. I really, really liked Antichrist. Uh-huh. But I'll probably never watch it again. Right. Like, it's not one of those movies that'd be like, oh yeah, I really want to buy Antichrist so I could watch it over and over again, but eh, I really don't want to, even though I really liked it. This movie, I don't really like that much. Hmm. But it's not horrible. It's not bad. Yeah. Cameron, what do you think of the film so far? This is my second time seeing it. I never want to see it again, just like the first time. Hmm. (laughs) I mean, it is ultimately a kind of a, a... It is a sad film, although... It is. It is also strange to say. It's also. Uh, it's also very darkly comic as well. I. I maybe. Uh, uh, well, I mean, like when it comes to the cross-eyed guy. I mean. Oh, the thing God. is, we're, I think we're trying to look in to find something yeah. in this, and he only <laughs> wins because he has that odd look in his face. That's definitely Morricone. How the score is done, right? It There's kinda... been very little music yeah. throughout the movie. This is like the most music there's been since the opening credits. Yeah, and that's what I like about with the opening credits and how pleasant it sounds, <laughs> right? He's got Wolverine claws. <laughs> Dude, let it go! It was over an hour ago. <laughs> God, who's shitting his cereal? Probably literally. <laughs> And this has been, of course, this is pretty much the end of all the kids. They're just killing them off, all off now. Just 120 days, just, you know, and beating the shit out of them, forcing them to beat shit. Right, Cameron? You know, even for Libertines, why are they friends with this guy? <laughs> yeah, it's like, like, dude, come on, just, just chill. I can definitely say that even though this film is on Blu-ray, I'm not upgrading this to Blu-ray. I'm content with just owning the DVD copy. This is not a film that I want to own on Blu-ray. <laughs> High definition shit eating. Hmm. How dare they dance without me? I thought we were friends. Happiest film ever made. Oh, 
this film? Oh, and um, when it came to awards, um, does this surprise you? This How film, many did it win? It was nominated <laughs> for a record zero Oscars. <laughs> I wonder why the Oscars didn't bite on this film. But I can't even recall if if Italy submitted this film for their you know contender for best foreign language you know, film. I don't think it was. You no, know, this film might have taken 120 days to make. I don't know for sure how long it took. Mm. But did it take 12 years to make? No, it didn't. Mm. No, no. It's still a shame that the the director was murdered. Like, because I w- if there's one film I would have seen the take you know the director to go back and take a look on it, it's this one. I would have loved to seen his reaction to everybody, you know, everyone's reaction to it. Reaction to the reaction. Hey, I was listening to that. God, you're such a dick. (laughs) Oh, they're gonna fuck. (laughs) And that's not out of the bounds of normal, so... And a kiss is just a kiss. Still, I just love the juxtaposition of that, you know, music and how pleasant it is to what we've just what's just transpired. Now, yeah. where do they find these sh- soldier kids? Because I, I kept thinking the whole time that they have all this group of kids, they're going to, you know, torture and whatever, do all these things too, and that wh- whichever few or mm-hmm. one of the kids that was, like, into it or liked it, that they, yeah. like, take under their wing... Yeah, and turn into like mm-hmm. one of these soldier guys. I thought there'd be some connection yeah. to it all. Yeah, I, I just assume it's that, all just. I assume they're just kids that either they volunteered for this sort of thing or, yeah, it's the end. Look, like, even the movie's like fine. fine. It's over. God, let's all go home. Don't you all feel a little better, cleaner after watching this film? And that's it. That's that's the end because they don't have an end credits to this. Oh, they have to sit through more. They need they needed one last musical stinger. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> then have it end with a heart with a heart wipe. <laughs> so yeah, we'll just talk a little bit more, just a little tad more about this. Since there's no credits to talk over. Yeah, because the credits were that. So ultimately, let's come to this one big question. Uh, Cameron, would you recommend this film? No, not at all. Not to anybody. Unless you're like really, really don't you know, want to see. You know, complete and utter depressed. I mean, I'm trying to think of a reason to watch it, but it's other than you know, <laughs> your assigned uh, morbid curiosity. Yeah, kind. other than morbid curiosity being assigned to watch it in school, I can't mm-hmm. think of a reason. Nathan, would you recommend this film? Only to very, I don't know, c- certain people. I might recommend to it if I was having a conversation with friends or whatever about, you know. Fucked up things in movies or, you know, shit like that. Then I might, Mm -hmm. might recommend it. Like a film completionist? Yeah, something like that. You're like one of those where it's like, if you want to take a look at, like, Italian cinema, and it's like, oh, you've Mm -hmm. seen Bertolucci, you've seen Rossellini, you've seen Fellini, Da Sica. Okay, have you seen Pasolini yet? No? Well, here's Salo, and this is probably his (laughs) most famous film, besides Gospel According to Matthew. And for me, it's... And once again, it'd be a certain group. It'd be mm-hmm. it would be like if if my if my father was like, mm-hmm. "Hey, recommend me a movie." I would not recommend yeah. it to my dad. We're gonna have date night. <laughs> what should I take your mother to go see? Oh, let's Solo. go see Solo. Like, well, we, you could have taken her to see Guardians of the Galaxy. No, we're going to see Solo. She's gonna <laughs> love this film. Yeah. Even before they watch it, they're like, um, Dad, where do you go? What the fuck? What the fuck? Movie theater showing Solo? What the fuck? Movie theater showing Solo now? Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to conclude oh, this. Nathan, oh, Nathan, do you want to make an announcement about what's going to be next That week? is true. Uh, what do, is you, do you want me to announce it, or should you we said you were going to? Yes. Or drop a hint. Drop a hint. Yeah, drop a hint on, on air. Um, okay, I I'll, 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 I'll drop end. a hint. It does have a connection <laughs> with a movie that will be released um, right around the time we record the, uh, the commentary. And I have a question. So does it, it does have a very specific connection. Does it involve eating shit? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, so Cameron, you're going to be fine, okay? You're still eating a bag of dick. <laughs> Gladly. So that concludes this installment of the commentators. This is David. 
This is Nathan. This is Cameron. And you all have a nice day, and for the love of God, please don't eat shit. Or watch this movie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait. Well, technically, you probably already have. If you're That's true. <laughs> Boom. No, they skip forward to the end. Wah, wah. <laughs> Just like a porn clip online. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Take it easy, fellas.